r slash ask reddit psychologists what's one thing a patient has told you that caught you off guard or vice versa patient's perspective my therapist once abruptly ended our session after telling me i needed to go to the er i had been in a car accident the day before and had an undiagnosed concussion that was pretty bad i was so out of it i didn't even realize i was out of it he later told me I was talking about inappropriate topics, I was so embarrassed I didn't ask what I specifically talked about, I didn't want to know at that point, and wasn't making much sense. I'm just glad he recognized I was off that day, and helped me get to the hospital. Man, concussions are hell. I've had a few, I've got one sister-in-law, who hasn't spoken to me, since I was chatting with her via Skype chat, while recouping in the hospital. I don't even remember what the hell I said. I've had similar, where I was, so panicked that I was gonna kill myself, and had been for a few weeks, that my therapist just recognized I was deteriorating, and walked with me to the nearby hospital. Told mine I had seen him grabbing a drink at the same place I used to go get drunk before covid. He stared at me, like I had discovered something NASA was hitting. We had a laugh and he confessed it. Context, I had huge drinking problems, and he told me he didn't like to drink at all. That's actually pretty funny. It is. After that things got way easier for me. And he inspired me to become a shrink myself after this crazy time's end. At the rehab I went to I had an absolutely amazing therapist. Dude had been through trauma as a kid, and was married slash religious slash with kids, when he realized he was gay. He and wife divorced amicably. Point being, he had been through a lot of life. He had an amazing therapist who really helped him come to terms with a few things. He decided he would become a therapist himself. Ten years later, to the day, he graduated as a licensed therapist. He really made an impact on me. He practiced EMDR and just had a lovely understanding of people and the world. My favorite thing he used to say went along the lines of, people make the best decisions they can, at the time, with the knowledge they have. Reminds me that all my duck ups and mistakes don't have to be constant sources of shame. He did it, you can too. I paid and sat through an entire session of therapy during which my therapist ranted as to how great of a career he could have had as a stand-up comedian, and how much he regrets his current profession. I kinda agreed with him near the end. Except, it wasn't funny. Well, that's kinda funny. It looks like the biggest joke wasn't the ones he said, but the one he lived. Did you at least laugh? I did have the last laugh, yes. During my first and only session with a particularly memorable child psychologist, he referred to me as a miserable bitch. It was true, but he didn't have to call me out like that. I was in a psych hospital as a teenager. While all the patients went to their rooms to do homework, or whatever, the mental health techs slash nurses would do their shift change. They'd have a meeting to update the night shift on how the patients were doing and anything that happened earlier in the day. My room was right next to the kitchen which was where the meetings happened. One day, my door was slightly open, and I decided to listen in on the meeting. The first thing I hear, is the main tech saying, Mr. Doe, Psy, he's a mess. I never held it against him, because I knew it was true, and he was a really good guy, but it was a little shocking hearing it said so bluntly. It's definitely funny in hindsight. As someone who's worked in a psychiatric facility, I'm glad you didn't take it too personally. It's exhausting work and sometimes you just want to get the vibe of a kid across as plainly as possible. A lot of the time, you don't even mean it as an insult, it's more empathy than anything, like, you get to know how a kid thinks, and sometimes kids are awesome, but they can also be a mess. Had a very similar experience with a therapist when I was in early high school. My mom was in the session with me, since it was the first appointment. The psychologist asked my mom, if I was always such a, pain in the ass. My mom and I were both appalled and walked out of the session. The next therapist we went to was wonderful, and I still see her to this day. 
There are always good therapists out there. I'm a clinical psychologist working on the back end of my post-doctorate. I work predominantly with acute adolescent presentations such as chronic self-injury or sexual trauma. I'm so used to the young people I help hating themselves. It hurts a lot inside, but I firmly believe in catharsis through positive regard and validation, so as we do our therapy, I often sprinkle in comments here and there about some of the things about them that I admire, respect, or appreciate. Things like their perseverance, their kindness, or their passion for an interest of this. I'm always so caught off guard when they agree with me or say something nice about themselves that it's really the only time I find myself slightly tearful in session. I'm always so damn proud of them and it hurts to hear the depths of their self-hatred. Those little moments of growth make me feel like it's the first warm day after winter. Context. I work a lot from an existential perspective. At this time I was working at a jail and talking to a guy who hitches rides on trains. We were talking about what he would have to do to change his life, to not just get high and ride trains. He looked me square in the eyes and told me he's freer than anyone else he comes across. He isn't indebted to a 40 plus hour work week, bills, or debts. He just hangs out with friends and travels state to state. He articulated how he knows he'll die young from missing a jump, but that ultimately he'll have lived and died as he wanted to. It was a conversation that really forced me to be cognizant of human freedom and choice. He wasn't disordered, he had chosen his own path and conclusion. The only thing he was doing wrong was breaking the status quo, the law. Frankly. Who am I to judge or decide how to live a life? From then on, I was more careful to never tell a patient how to live, or what to do. I'm only here to help someone think through their life, and pick their desired direction. I have come to use a lot of sophist techniques, to get patients to their own eureka moments. I think this illustrates what most people don't realize, and that's that as therapists, we learn from our clients as well. I'll learn something from every person I see. This reminds me of when my SO would counsel slash volunteer with a food pantry. He said that often, some of the regulars would express zero desire to get an apartment, get a job, etc. And not because they were lazy, but because they were comfortable with the life they were living. This is a weird concept for some people to grasp, but it is fairly common in the homeless population. Some people are okay, and happy being on the streets and that's okay. I was in my second ever session, which coincidentally was right after my nan's funeral. I was talking about some stuff that had happened with my sister, who I had already said was probably my biggest issue, and he asked, why is this person in your life? Why do you want to continue a relationship that hurts you so much? Do you actually want this relationship? I was floored. It had never occurred to me that my sister didn't get a place in my life by default because family. I can't tell you how much this improved my life. Left both my mother and her reincarnate, my sister, behind years ago. Can't express how much better my life is without them in it. Rotten is rotten. It had never occurred to me that my sister didn't get a place in my life by default because family. I wish more people understood this. There is a particular person in my wife's family. Her sister always calls crying because this person upset her. My wife is always in a bad mood because of this person. I told her she can just cut them out, but she doesn't want to because it will affect her relationship with the not shitty people. But I'm like, you don't need anyone shitty and you don't need people that would pick shitty over you. When I was in high school I was hospitalized for being suicidal. My doctor there told me some really brilliant advice that totally cleared things up for me, basically just fixing me on the spot. You just have to be a normal boy. LOL. Instead of being ill, have you tried being not ill? I had one tell me I needed to learn to bite the bullet. Which turned out to be good advice, even if it was blunt. Edit, I wasn't there because I was suicidal or anything. I was there because my mom and I had a pretty volatile relationship. 
she had some emotional issues, where she'd just lash out at me over things that didn't make sense. And if I needed to learn to stick it out until she got better. Which she eventually did, and we have a much better relationship. Really paid off. Sometimes shit happens, and truly the only way to get through it is by moving forward. As you said it can be blunt, but it is the reality sometimes. When I was in first or second grade, the school counselor fell asleep when I was describing a bullying situation that I was in. I was so young that I didn't know how to respond, so I just sat there in his office until he woke up. That's ducking horrible. Did you ever say anything? Simba voice, sir, come on. You gotta get up sir. I had a therapist tell me when I was a teenager that she didn't know what else to do to help me because it seemed like I already understood everything pretty well. This was after my overbearing and crazy helicopter mom dragged me in for being depressed. Then she switched to therapy I'm my mom and my mom quickly was in tears because she has the emotional strength of a child and wanted it to be about me when it was actually all about her. I knew exactly why I was depressed. I was stuck by myself in the middle of nowhere with her crazy ass. No personal space, no ability to get away, not being able to say no, her getting jealous of my friends when I spent time with them. It would make anyone depressed. She didn't even let me sit with the therapist by myself. My mom did this and would change my doctors because they wouldn't tell her what we talked about in sessions. Then she found one who put me on all sorts of meds for depression, anxiety, and sleep. She's is completely dependent and has turned into an ever bigger mess. I did most of my training in a pediatric hospital. One of my patients, young adult, with relapsing leukemia, cancer since young childhood, wanted to go to an outdoor festival with their significant other. The oncologists were adamant that due to the patient's slow white blood count and current course of treatment, they shouldn't let them go. Basically if that person caught an infection it would kill them. The patient was pissed, understandably so, and said something like, I've had this disease since I was a child, I know I'm going to die soon, I'm going to the concert, whether you like it or not, and if I die, then at least I'll do it on my own terms. It's always quite moving when a young person expresses their own mortality and confronts it head on. I had such admiration for that person. And they are right. Why suffer just to live longer? The patient could wear a mask and be very careful but should still have fun and live. Not a psychologist, but I tried to see a therapist for some lie to moderate incest based trauma and chose the wrong jest shrink. I didn't exactly do my research, I picked the closest therapist to my office that my insurance covered, it was billed as generic family therapy, perfect, I thought. And booked an appointment for immediately after work. When I walked up to the front door, I noticed that it said, Christian marriage and family therapy. I was immediately uncomfortable, but I was trying to be more open minded towards those with a religious bent, and figured that, as long as they could do their job, their religion was no concern of mine. I explained to the gent, manning the desk, that I wanted to talk about some mildly disturbing experiences, and I wasn't religious, or even aware, that I had booked an appointment at a religious clinic. He was very kind, and explained that he helped all sorts of people, and had heard it all. Then he lead me to the therapy office, which consisted of a very large chair, a tiny rickety footstool, and wall-to-wall -wall racks of tapes. I told him about a traumatic experience that had happened days previously, and his reaction shocked me. My therapist cried, he at me through watery eyes and said, I don't know what to say. He tried to convince me that I wanted to have kids someday and that only him resolving my trauma would help me be the best mother I could be. I still don't want kids, so that was confusing. He also expressed a relentless interest in trying past life regression and or hypnotherapy. I point blank asked him, wasn't that proven to be ineffective in the 70s? And he assured me that he had been a part of a lot experiments and tests in the 70s, and this was the real deal. 
The last thing he said to me, after I told him I didn't want to have another appointment, was to rub his hands together and say, wouldn't it be great to get into that head of yours, like a steel trap. To date, this was one of the most surreal things that has ever happened to me. Was talking to my school counselor about some mental health issues and told him that I like playing card games to take my mind off of it. The man literally opens his cabinet and pulls out a briefcase full of UGR cards. I'm a massive nerd and says, so. Wanna play? Don't get me wrong. But this guy had a lumberjack beard, was fit and looked more like a athlete than a counselor, so I was shocked. Got over my problems, and played every Wednesday against him. That's so wholesome. I also met a very good social group by UGR too. They are practically a working adult now, but time we spent together was joyful. It's beautiful. Had a therapist tell me to make a duck budget. Hear me out, lol. He said you only have so many ducks to give before you blow, so just like with money you need to budget it out, start with things you have to give a duck about, kids, work, health and then cross the things you dislike giving a duck about, like people's opinion of what you wear, off the list and don't give a duck about that shit. This was an older gentleman who was cool, but for the most part very well spoken and didn't cuss. Hearing him say I needed to stop spreading my ducks so far made me die of laughter and immediately feel better 